since we're talking um, throughout the semester, if there's a week that you're finding is particularly difficult or you just want to have more discussion about it, you want to have more practice with it, any type of thing, we can set these live interactive sessions up. It takes me about 13 seconds to set up a session. And I can do this from my, you know, from my home. Uh, currently, I'm in my office on campus. Um, but if there's a particular evening that, you know, homework is getting close to being due and you guys need some help, shoot me an email. Hey, can we have a, a Thursday night session at 9 p.m.? Sure. Um, the only the only thing is, so you noticed how you had to register for this session and that registers you for the entire semester. So now for the rest of the semester, you will get emails with the link to get into the Wednesday at noon session. If we do an optional session on a Thursday night, a Tuesday afternoon, whatever, um, that will have to be a different registration code. Uh, so I would put that in the email, post an announcement um, and you would have to re-register just like you did for this session. Uh, that's the only thing about throwing a different day or time in. So, um, okay. Um, just, I don't usually do video, and I don't know how this is going to show up. Where's it at? But I like everybody to at least have a face to go with the name. Ooh, so there's that. This is me. Hi. And this is my mm. office. Got to have Stitch back there, right? Um, but I usually don't like um, the video because then it distracts me because I see myself on my screen and I don't like it. So I'm Becky. Welcome to Math 123, and if you have questions, this is the face you get. So enough of that. Let's go to the screen. <laughs> um, okay, so my office is on the Warsaw campus. If you'd ever like to come see me, please do. Um, yeah, I'm here a lot, I feel like. But we're going to work our way. This is kind of um, the basis of, of how we roll. So you've all found your voice with your microphone, which is fabulous. Um, it's Conversation goes quicker if you talk, but if you don't feel comfortable talking or if you have a dog that's barking so you don't like to have your microphone on, we do have a chat box. Um, I've posted hi, Carolyn, in the chat box since she was the first one in. So feel free to chat at any point in time. You can ask me questions. You can ask your classmates questions. Um, you can just post random information, anything in the chat box as you want. And feel free to interrupt me verbally at any point in time with questions, comments, concerns, whatever. Uh, because you have all the power. So the goal is to be here from roughly 12 to 1250. Um, that will vary depending on the week. Some weeks will be done at 1240. Some weeks will be done at 105. Um, it depends on how many questions you have and how well the material is going. If you need to leave early, please do. Um, if we need to have an additional session because stuff isn't making sense, just ask. Um, I want you to be successful. And I know sometimes online courses are a little bit more difficult um, just because you feel like you're on an island. I don't want you to be on an island, right? So let me help you. You just have to tell me how I can help you. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is kind of go over this course. And I'm actually going to jump out of PowerPoint and jump into the course just real quick. Hopefully you've watched the videos that I posted um, in the announcements um, about web work and the course itself. Um, just things to, to pay attention, uh, the course calendar. I think I need to adjust some due dates. So um, I originally, I think I had everything due on Sunday. And yes, it looks that to be true. I am moving all due dates in this course to be Mondays. Um, and I'm doing that uh, for a reason, and I will tell you that now. <sighs> Students like to wait until the last minute to do homework. And um, I'm not saying that you guys are going to be the traditional students, but it seems that that's the case. And so everybody waits till Sundays or Saturdays to start their homework. And then I get a flood of emails on Sunday afternoon and evening because people have questions and I welcome questions and I want to help you. Um, but I don't want to work on Sunday anymore. And I've, I've worked on Sundays my entire academic career and I kind of want a day off. So I want to work less on Sundays this semester than I have in the past. So I'm moving due dates to Monday and that way you can work over the weekend when you have time. And then if you have questions and you email me on Sunday, I have time to get back on you on with two of you on Monday and you can finish the stuff. So it's giving you an extra day, which is a positive, And it's making me feel like I don't have to work on Sundays. 
So I guess in all in all, it's about me. <laughs> is kind uh, of that sense. It's a win-win, though. I yeah. mean, you're benefiting yourself and us. Exactly, exactly. So I will be going through and changing all of these due dates um, to be on Mondays, except that one was wrong Monday. Okay, so, um, but just, you know, the calendar feature there. So if we go into the course uh, back where we're at, I'm not going to spend too much time on this um, because I, I think you guys will, will pick this up. The announcements are going to fill up very quickly. So when this class is over today, I will um, save this recording and then it will get posted as an announcement. And the title will be Live Session 117 and then the video will be posted. Um, as we get to Excel assignments, because throughout the course, I think we have seven Excel homework. I have uh, help videos to go with each one of those. I will post those under the announcements and it will say, you know, pie chart Excel assignment video. So make sure you're kind of paying attention to the announcements. A lot of them are going to be helpful videos to go with things. We have three projects in this course, all very he heavily dependent upon Excel usage. If you are not familiar with the Excel spreadsheet program, do not fret. That's why I made all of the help videos. So I post all of those because I don't want you to feel like I can't do Excel, I'm going to fail. That is not a true statement. I will help you through the Excel piece. Um, I made all of the videos for the course. I'm sure if you've watched any of the videos with the packet, you recognize my voice at this point. Um, so as you're working through things, if something doesn't make sense or you need more clarification or you want more examples, you want another video, all you have to do is ask. You guys have um, you know, an advanced, I don't, that's not the right word. Uh, I don't know, you, you're, you're benefiting by having the video maker for this course statewide as your instructor, because if you need something, I can crank it out very, very quickly. You just have to ask. I'm, I'm here to, to do whatever you need. Uh, so back to the announcements. Make sure you're paying attention to what's coming in, because those are useful pieces of information. Um, the syllabus, I do recommend you read through this. Um, but here's all the ways to contact me in where I am. I don't know if you, any of you live close to the Warsaw campus, um, but feel free if you need help to come in during my office hours. Um, on Wednesday afternoons, um, room 151 is a computer lab. So if you live close to campus and you just wanna come in and work on homework for a couple hours and have help, I'm here for you. Um, and the other thing with this course, at the very bottom of the syllabus, you see a uh, chronological order of all of the assignments. So again, they will all be Monday pretty soon here, except exam one. All the exams are due on Saturday at noon. Depending on where you're taking your exams, I don't think the Warsaw Testing Center is open on Saturdays. So if you're going to take your test in Warsaw, Saturday the 17th is not an option. You're going to need to take it by Friday at 5. So make sure you're paying attention to where you want to take your exam and getting that scheduled early. We will talk more about that uh, here in a couple weeks when we get closer. But I like um, having a, a organized listing of all of the assignments. Okay, so hopefully you've already started playing around in the modules. This is kind of a, an organized piece as well. Um, so module one, that's what we're covering today. The orientation into the course, section two of the mathematics. You have a quiz and a discussion board along with the web work section two homework. A pretty light week, which I think is good because that's how we're starting. Um, how you deal with this course is up to you. Um, have any of you watched uh, some of the videos that go with the packet? Or do you have any idea what I'm talking about when I say that? Yeah, I was going to say what packet. I only have my textbook. Well, I call it a packet because it's more of a workbook than a textbook. Um, but you'll notice that, that that packet or that textbook, whatever you want to call it, um, has a lot of questions but not a lot of answers in it. Right? There's a lot of blank spaces for you to work through. And that's, mm. that's kind of the goal. If you take this class face to face, that, that workbook is what we do in class. We just every day we come in and we do a, we do a section and we work through those pages together. Well, we don't have that ability because we meet for 50 minutes once a week and not four hours. Very different. So yeah. um, there's a couple of different spots you can find the videos, but under modules, under resources, you see the link here titled videos. This takes you to a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet was made by me because I created the videos. 
and I posted it for your ease. Come on, buddy. There we go. All right, so we're starting in unit one. Today, like the you, first the first lesson is kind of the intro stuff, and then we are getting into lesson two. So these web or these YouTube videos, and you can see how long they are. This is basically week one material. And if you watch these, these will follow your workbook exactly. So you can kind of work through your workbook as you're watching the videos, and that's how you're going to work through your material. Some of these sections you may breeze through because you remember doing this stuff. And some of it is going to feel like it's brand new because it's been a while. So how much you watch the videos is up to you and what you need for your particular learning enjoyment. Um, also, I have um, I have some people in the past who would watch all of the videos before the live session. Um, that way, it's the live session is more of a. a I hit the high points and I don't cover anything in the workbook. Everything we do in this session is going to be extra. It's going to be different examples. So you might just need a, a notebook to scratch things down as we work through some problems. So some people like to watch those the videos from the packet first and then come to class to reemphasize those skills. Some people like to do the um, come to class first, have get the skills, you know, the basic, what's important, and then go back and watch the videos after that. You're going to kind of have to play around of what you like best and what you think is most important. Um, it's really going to be up to you. So the, um, back to the module. So like module one is this week. We're doing orient here we go. orientation in section two. So if you needed to go to the videos, all you would watch would be, you know, lesson one is the orientation and then lesson two. Next week is module two. That's sections three, four and five. So you would watch the videos for sections three, four and five and kind of work through from that standpoint. Um, but that's where you find the videos. OK. Does that make sense? Um, in the back of your your workbook, uh, there's I think there's a blue piece of paper that separates Math 123 and Math 080. 080 is a support course that none of you are enrolled in because you're in the online version. But there are extra practice pages for every section in the book. And I have videos to go with all of those pages. So if you're really struggling with maybe section four and you want some more practice, you can always go to the back of the book and you've got five more videos that are just extra practice with that section. So you can use that as needed. Some people like it, some people don't. It's up to you entirely. Okay, oops, that doesn't need to be up. All right, so there's your modules. Um, this is also where you will access your exams. So when you get to module five in the first exam, this is how you will get there. So you will go to a testing center. Um, if you go to an Ivy Tech location, I don't have to know about it because the paperwork gets submitted to Ivy Tech statewide. Um, if you need to take your exam somewhere other than Ivy Tech, we need to have a conversation because it's a lot more paperwork and I've got to call people. So if you can't take it at any Ivy Tech location, I need you to shoot me an email as soon as possible or call me so that we can um, start getting that ball rolling because it takes a bit. Or if you have any other questions about exam one, let me know. Um, but we will probably talk about exam one probably in, in week three, I would think is a good spot. Unless I'm not here that week, then it'll be week two. Okay, so that's modules. Web work, please make sure you watch the web work video because I'm not going to go into too much of that right now. But in web work, I just want to remind you that um, if you get a problem wrong three times, this hint feature shows up. So you have to get it wrong three times for it to show up, and then you get a video example hint, which is a problem very similar to the one that you see. Uh, it's just different numbers. So it'll walk you through the process and allow you to um, kind of see how to do the problem so that you can apply that to the problem that you have. Not every problem has a video hint. So if you're stuck on a problem and there's no hint, shoot me an email, tell me where you're stuck, and I'm more than happy to help you. So um, generally, if you shoot me an email, um, I will get back to you probably within the day. Uh, I had a student last night who emailed me at 8.35. I got home at quarter till nine and I had her responded to by 10 after nine. So if you, you know, depending on what's going on in my life, but during the week, I'm pretty quick at getting back to you an email. So there are no stupid questions. Um, ask anything as often as you need to. 
um, I'm here to help. So that's kind of the big thing with web work is just realizing that if you get it wrong three times, that's when the hint video shows up. Um, I'm not sure why three. That's just how it's set up. So, okay. Are there any other general questions about the class itself in terms of ID Learn, web work, anything like that? Everybody's good? I guess so. All right. Well, as we go, if as things come up, um, you know, just feel free to, uh, you know, either ask them verbally or put them in the chat box. Vanessa's doing a good job in the chat box there. Um, so so feel free. That's that's kind of how we roll. All right. So this is more how um, the general live session will go. We will start with what to do this week. So this week we're doing module one, which is sections one and two. For web work, you have the orientation. The orientation is not for a grade. Um, it's just kind of to get you familiar with the web work buttons so that you're more comfortable working in web work um, because it does have its intricacies. You know, it doesn't always like to work. Web work does not like commas. So you don't want to use commas. If you need to type in 1,000, um, you know, you want to type, oh, I need a pen. There we go. This would be acceptable in web work. This is not. So if you type in one with a comma, it's going to give you an error. So make sure that you're using no commas. That's just one that I thought of off the top of my head. Um, so you've got your two, uh, web work two is due, and then your discussion board and your first quiz. Um, the discussion board, I do not require that you respond to your classmates. Um, you get graded on your initial post, but it can be a whole lot more meaningful if you actually have conversation back and forth. So if you're in the discussion board and you're reading somebody else's and it's, you know, maybe you have a comment, concern, um, suggestion, something that is uh, going to benefit either the person or the class, please go ahead and respond. Um, you know, we're not here to shoot anybody down, but if, if it can benefit anybody or, or make us better um, in the class, then that's, that's a positive. So, okay, so that's that. And we are moving on to the next page and erase the drawings. Okay, so we have one, only one slide for section one. So the class is quantitative reasoning, and I think it's important that we first talk about what is quantitative reasoning. Because before you jump into a semester of a math course, you kind of should at least be familiar with what you're getting into. So, do any of you have any idea of what does it mean? Besides get back on the math horse, because that's my definition. What when you see quantitative reasoning, what does that mean to you? Noah, did you just raise your hand? I think I did. I think you did too, yeah. Okay, so Vanessa um, in the chat box, sorry, she said reasoning with numbers. Okay. No, go ahead. Well, yeah, I was going to say reasoning with numbers. I don't, I, I think I'm struggling to see the chat box. I don't see it anywhere. Um, It's one of the, I, I'm not sure what, what go to training looks like on, on the non- I found it. Person. Okay, good. There you go. <laughs> I always, um, so I don't know, do you guys have like a long gray box with a lot of plus buttons with crap next to it? I don't know what it looks like on your end. I always pull my chat box out so it's separate because you can detach things from the go to training, at least on my end. I don't know. Um, okay, so anyway, so Vanessa said reasoning with numbers, and I like that because when we think about the word quantitative, right, that makes us think of the word quantity, and quantity means numbers, which this shouldn't surprise anybody. This is a math course. Um, but then we talk about reasoning. So both Noah and Vanessa use the word reasoning with numbers. What does reasoning mean? Let's break that down a little bit. I would say it's just kind of like your thought process of like what's going on around you. Okay. So like thinking. Great. 
Anybody else have a different word for reasoning? And by the way, my handwriting is always bad. So if there's something you can't read, let me know, because writing with a mouse, not easy. Okay, so yeah, well, let's go with that. So basically, by these definitions, quantitative reasoning means thinking with numbers. That's basically what we're going to do. Most math classes probably in your past, you've done some problems, you found an answer, you circled the number, and you were done, right? Because you did the problem, that was the goal. Well, while that is still part of our goal, we want to go a step further, and we want to actually figure out what does that number mean? So when you do the big problem and you get an answer of four, what does that four tell you? Is that you've got four turkeys in your front yard? Does that mean you have four bodies buried in your basement? What does that four mean? So we're going we're gonna to write what we call meaningful sentences, which is simply telling me what your answer means. It really forces you to understand what the problem was asking. Um, you know, we're not going to spend very many problems where we just start simple three plus two, right? That answer is five. There's not, there's no meaning to that. Most of the problems that you're going to do are going to be story problems because that's life is one big story problem. So we're going to start thinking through what do these problems mean? What does it tell us when I actually play with it? Why is that important? So we're going to do all of these extra thinking pieces, right? There's the reasoning with the math. And it's not nearly as bad as you think it's going to be because I'm going to go out on a limb and say most of you are adults. Even if you're an adult in age, that doesn't mean you're adult in your mind. But I'm going to say that a lot of you have adult things. You're paying tuition. You may be a parent. You probably have a job of some type. You're doing adult things. And therefore, you're already starting to think through processes and you're working through things. You're already reasoning in different aspects of your life. And you're probably reasoning with math also. So we're just going to take what you're doing in your real life now and we're going to apply it to a math course. So really, if you just you know open up your heart and let it in, it's not going to be that bad. Really, I promise. OK, so that's section one in a, in a nutshell. Again, I'm not I'm not covering anything in your packet. So, well, not anything. I'm not doing the problems in your packet, so you can watch the videos and go through there. All right, we're moving on to section two. This is where we're going to spend the next 20 minutes or so. Um, and it's all about ratios. So you have all learned about ratios at some point in your life. And it's very possible that it's been a long time ago. And math, as I'm sure you are all aware, is the one thing if you don't use it, you lose it. So I don't want you ever in this course to, to think something and go, oh, I should know that, and then feel bad if you don't. Don't, because you when have you used it? So if you haven't used it and it's gone, don't worry about it. Ask questions, because it's like riding a bike. We just got to oil all of the gears, get them all rolling, and then you're going to be fine. But you have to ask so that we can make sure we get all of your gears oiled. So never feel bad if you have forgotten something that you learned 10 years ago. It's okay. All right. I will never say, well, you should have known that. Because you know what? There's a lot of stuff that I should know, but I haven't used it, so I lost it. And, you know, that's just life. That's how, that's how it is. So, okay. Ratios. Can any of you tell me how we can write some ratios? Um, the there is like a blank to blank, so x to y, I guess you could say. Yeah, use a colon too. Yeah, yeah. So Brooke in there um used a colon, and since you said x to y, I'm just going to use that. Um, and if I call you by a name that you don't like, like I just said Brooke instead of Brooklyn, I hope that's okay. Feel free to tell me, because some people the names that pop up aren't the names they want to be called. You just got to tell me what you want me to, how you want me to. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Okay, so we can use a colon. How else can we write a ratio? Because that is one. There's a hint if you look below. Anybody see the word below here? Can you hear here? Like in the form of a fraction, so like x over y x over y and we could be using numbers here it doesn't really matter but yeah so we could write something as a fraction um if you recall way back in the day we used the word two x two y um if you take just for effect i'm going to change colors if we have a number 
So I'm going to take a fraction and I'm going to make it um, 4 over 5. If I have a fraction, right, this is a ratio, I can change that fraction to a decimal. So technically, we can write it as a decimal. So a decimal could also be a ratio. Um, Recall that any number, including a decimal, can be made a fraction by putting it over 1. Um, the fractions is the big one, so I'm just going to stop there. Um, any of these are okay. If you're, I mean, you guys aren't going to be taking any paper pencil tests, but if the question says write a ratio, mathematically any of these methods would be acceptable. When you're dealing with online pieces, um, Ratios are generally fractions um, or decimals. So this is primarily how we're going to roll, is fractions or decimals. Very seldom do we use the colon. Very seldom do we use the word two. Um, those are just not as easily to play with because we oftentimes will want to reduce ratios. Well, they're easiest to reduce when you put them as a fraction. And the ultimate reducing is to just simply change it to a decimal and putting it over one. So fractions is usually how we start. Probability that we're going to get to in section 16 and 17 is dealt off of, you know, probability ratios. We write them all as, as, as decimals. Um, so just kind of get in that habit. If you, do you all remember how to change a fraction to a decimal? Eh, it's, it's still kind of there, but not really. It's been kind of there, but not really. Okay, so remember that the fraction bar is like a division sign. So if we keep with this fraction 4 fifths, that is the same as 4 divided by 5. So if you use your calculator, since 4 is on top, 4 comes first, 4 will go into your calculator first. So simply 4 divided by 5 will give you the point 0.8. So you will want to make sure that you're comfortable changing fractions to decimals, um, decimals to percents, um, that kind of thing. Rounding, those are all big pieces. The last few pages of section one in your packet deal with those playing with numbers, if you will. Um, so if you have, you know, if it's kind of there, but it's a little bit hazy, you might want to watch the last couple videos in section one just to give yourself a refresher. Because you will be counted wrong on quizzes, exams, etc. if you do not round correctly. So just kind of keep that in mind that it's a skill that you need to be able to do in here. And we don't teach it in here. It's not one of our, one of our skills. Okay. So this section is all about ratios, converting numbers, and so forth. Most of this stuff, I, it's like riding a bike. You're going to spend six minutes on a video and go, ah, I remember that. Because we just got to get it back. When's the last time you talked about a, a ratio, right? It's been a minute. Unfortunately, not every problem is easy when it comes to ratios. And so I want to talk about some specific types of ratios because this, in my experience, is where students have the most trouble. And that's kind of how I build the live session. The stuff that I've seen where students struggle, that's what I want to talk about. I don't need to talk about the stuff that you guys can do on your own, right? Then I'm wasting everybody's time. So, have any of you heard of child dependency ratios, old age dependency ratios, or just simply age dependency ratios? Anyone? Oh, Noah has. Okay. Anybody else? Maybe. Um, I didn't really um, ever hear about, well, I don't listen to radio or um, watch the news, so I got nothing. But I didn't really hear about these things until I started teaching this class, and I, I learned a ton. So these dependency ratios are all about, um, well, the ratios of population in terms of age groupings. And it's based, uh, it tells us a lot about the uh, economy of different locations. So might be state, uh, nationally, different countries, whatever. But here's the big deal. So let me get a color up here first. So when we are talking about children, does anybody know the ages that this is I guess, I don't know whose definition, but by the definitions of these ratios, how old is a child? Noah, you're so close. Ooh, Vanessa, you're off. Y'all got the zero part, right? It's child is zero to 14 by this definition. So, so if we take Crystal and Noah as an average, you get the 14. So once you hit 15, you are called part of the working class. So you're a child from 0 to 14. 
You are part of the working class if you are 15 to what's the upper end of the working class? Anybody want to guess? 65 is close, but we call 65 old. So the upper edge of the working class is 64. So ooh, again, if we take the average, 63 and 65 there. So a working class is 15 to 64. And then the oldies, old people are anybody above 65. So those are the three age groups. And now one thing I want to put, put out there, this is stuff that is not on your formula sheet excuse me, and therefore you are expected to know this. I have found that the easiest way to memorize these things is that when I'm doing the ratios on paper, I write it all down. So instead of just typing things into my calculator, I actually write the work on paper first, and that helps me remember things. So as you're working through your packet, write it all out. As you're doing the problems in web work, write it out. It might take you an extra 10 or 15 minutes to get through your homework, but you're going to remember it because you wrote it down. If you simply type numbers into your calculator and then type numbers into web work, you're going to remember less than if you actually take the time to write it out. Trust me, I know this kind of crap. Okay, so now that we have our age groups, we can talk about the three different ratios. If you think about this logically, children depend on their parents, right? We're thinking kind of just in general. If you have a kid who's eight years old, they live at home, you pay for their shelter, you buy them food, you buy them clothes, they suck you dry. They depend on you. You go to work to get the paycheck so that you can afford to support that money sucker, right? Absolutely. So when we talk about child dependency, those children are dependent on the workers. So child dependency ratio is found by taking the children and divided by the working class. So the way we check this out is that everybody is dependent upon the workers because the workers are the one who get the paycheck. The paycheck is the one that buys all the stuff to support people. So that's kind of how you can think about this in your head. The child depends on the workers, okay? Old age dependency. Now we're talking about the old people. So 65 and above is considered old. They're not part of the working class, so we assume that they have retired. They are now sitting at home in their lazy boy with their slippers on watching Judge Judy, right? They're retired. They are dependent on their working children to support them. I'm just giving you a visual in your head so that you can remember how this all works. So our old age, we've got the oldies, and they are dependent on the working class. So these two ratios kind of give us... Um, a peek into the amount of workers it takes to support that particular population. And then when you get to age dependency ratio, you're thinking, okay, I've got the children who are dependent and the old people are dependent. So I take all of my dependents, which would be the children, ooh, that's bad age, children plus the old people divided by the working class. Okay. So all the dependents divided by those people that are supporting them. And this is how we get our three ratios. I like to think about ratios, especially things like this, in words first. Because if you can remember how this works in words, the number part is easy. It's the coming up with the words that, that is a little bit trickier. Okay. Any questions on the ratios themselves, how we came up with that or anything? Okay, so now let's actually get to some math. So we've got one example here, and I made this fairly small numbers, and I grouped them together for you. Um, you'll notice we don't have a ton of time, so I can't make a lot of these problems very intricate, or we're not going to have enough time to have conversation. So you may, not may, you will find that um, problems in web work might be a little bit tougher than this. There's going to be a lot more numbers you're gonna to have to actually say, okay, instead of having the zero to 14 age group already figured for me, you might have to add three age groups together, maybe zero to five, five to nine, nine to four, or 10 to 14. So just be aware that your problems are gonna be a little bit different when you get to your homework. Okay, here we go. Let's do some fun stuff. Okay, child dependency ratio. Remember, that's the children divided by the workers. So what does that fraction look like numerically? 
if I throw some numbers in there, what's it going to look like? All right, so you gave me the age groups. Those are good age groups, but I want the actual numbers. There we go. There we go. Very good. Okay, so think about the children. The children are 0 to 14. True statement. There are 400 children and 850 workers. Very good. So this is the ratio of children to workers. Yeah, no worries. No worries. You're good. Okay. If you're going to leave something as a fraction, you have to reduce it. Well, let me tell you what, uh, reducing fractions is probably one of the worst things to do in mathematics, right? I don't like to do it. It takes a lot of time and it's not fun. So the easiest thing to do is simply change that to a decimal. So if I change 400 over 850 into a decimal, I would like us to go to three decimal places. So what is that ratio to three decimal places? Yes, 0.471 is correct. So remember, if you're rounding to three decimal places, you look one place past the one, um, or as you, I don't remember what it was, and then you, you round up or down based off the fourth decimal point. Right? Now, you might be saying, I don't have any idea what that number means, and touche. So here's the deal. If we have 0 0.471 over 1, Remember that the top number represents children, the bottom number represents workers, and this is about dependency. So that means 0.471 children depend on every one worker. Everybody see how I got that? Because the top number is children. So 0.471 children depend on one worker. And that's where you say, well, that doesn't make any sense because you cannot have 0.4 of a child. True statement. Okay, math is about equality. If I move the decimal one spot, both top and bottom, I can do that. So that would give me 4.71 over 10. So now I can say 4.71 children are dependent on 10 workers. That makes a little bit more sense, right? Um, 4.7 still seems a little bit weird. Well, I can move my decimal again, and now I have 47.1 over 100. We could do this all day long. But essentially, 47 children are dependent on 100 workers. So if you put 100 workers in a room, they are going to support 47 children. This is how the economy is kind of, I don't know what the like magic number is, but this is what we're playing with here. Okay. Any questions on how I played with those decimals or all of that? Because you are going to have to select in web work, like which sentences go with it and that kind of dealio. Okay. Okay, let's move on to old age dependency ratio. So now again, remember, old age is the oldies compared to the workers. So let's start our fraction numerically. So what does that look like just in numbers as a fraction? Okay, so Vanessa's on it, 220 over 850. Then again, we want to go to a decimal rounded to three decimal places. Point two five nine, very good. And so, point two five nine oldies depend on one worker, right? And remember, we're always compared to workers in these problems. Um, so, two point five nine would compare to ten. 25.9 compares to 100, 259 compared to 1,000. We could do this all day. Okay. And then the last ratio, I'm trying to find a new color. Just age dependency are the children plus the oldies divided by the workers. So now our first step is to add the children and the, and the old people together, which is 620. Very good. And we divide by the workers, which is 850. 
Notice how my denominator is the same in all three dependency ratios because we're always compared to the same working class. And what is that as a decimal to three places? 0.729. That is a super high dependency ratio, but this is made up data, so that makes sense. Okay. Questions about age dependency ratios. That's the hardest thing you're going to do in section two, in my opinion. Because that's new. Most people haven't figured that before. It's a new thought process. Everything else you've probably seen before, it's just a matter of getting back familiar with it. Okay. All right. So mathematically, that's the end of the math lesson. Ooh, wrong button. Because there's not a whole, whole lot in here. Um, so to do, you need to get into web work. And I'm pretty sure that um, everybody's in. So if you watch the video, if you haven't watched it yet in the announcements, watch the introduction to web work video. Get in and do some homework because your due dates right is next Monday um, and pay attention to the due dates. Email me with questions. If you are working on a problem in web work and you are stuck, right, don't just say, oh, I just won't get that one. No, try to figure it out. Right. And what I mean by that is shoot me an email and say, Becky, I'm stuck on section two, number seven. I don't get it. I can go in and look at your exact problem because everybody's number seven are different. But I can go, let's say Vanessa emails me. I can go into that specific web work, look at your specific problem and give you very specific feedback. Um, but I, you have to ask. Uh, also, depending on the problem, sometimes it's easiest for me if I can see your work. So if you have a smartphone or a tablet of some type that takes pictures, feel free to take a picture and shoot it to me in an email. Um, you know, I'm stuck on, on section two, number seven. Here's my work. What did I do wrong? Man, I can pick that apart in under 10 seconds because looking at your problem, looking at your work, it makes it super easy. So, you know, I, I will help you as much as I can. But I have, you know, if you give me something to work with, man, we can really, really get you to be successful in this course. So um, does anybody have any questions about anything? about uh, the structure of the course, um, expectations, due dates, um, what you're supposed to do next, anything. I also recommend um, discussion boards. Uh, a lot of them deal with the live session. So those of you that are here live, I would recommend as soon as we're done, if you have time, jump into the course and do your discussion board right now um, because you, it's all fresh. For those people who are watching this recording later, um, as soon as you're done watching the recording, do the discussion board. So really no discussion boards should be done before Wednesday at one because if they're about the live session, you really can't do that before the live session occurs. Okay. Um, yeah. Anybody else? Comments, concerns, suggestions? As I think of things that I think will be beneficial to you, I will either shoot you an email or post an announcement, depending on how important I think it is. Um, so at any point in time, of course, ask questions. Um, if you ask me a question that I think is would be beneficial to the whole group, I may reply to you as a mass email to everybody. Uh, just heads up on that. Um, yeah. Anything else? What can I do for you? Gone once, gone twice. All right, um, I'll stick around for a few minutes if you have any individual questions you'd like to ask. Otherwise, um, go forth and prosper. Remember, you have web work two, quiz one, and discussion board one. Those things are all due by Monday. So go ahead and uh, knock those out. We'll start a, a good semester. So thanks for coming and being participatory. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you guys soon. Let me know when you need me. Bye.